Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, this is Peter Moriarty and welcome to Google Made Easy. I'm extremely happy to have you here today because what we're going to be covering is how to create a company intranet with Google Sites. Now, before we get started, two quick things. Number one, if you're sitting at home and you'd like to follow along, this session is going to be implementation heavy. So be ready with your computer or your additional screen to get some stuff implemented as we go through the content. Number two, if you'd like to continue the conversation online and share with the other members of Business Blueprint community, what you can do is use the hashtag Google Made Easy and follow on with discussion, questions, and even feedback. And from time to time, I even jump onto Twitter and answer questions on that hashtag. So let's get started. What we're going to cover today. In this session, we're going to be going through why is it important to build a company intranet and what kind of tools you can use to bring that intranet together. We're going to specifically be talking about using Google Sites to build your intranet and why it's important to use Google over other platforms that you might want to be able to choose between. How to get started and create your Google Site is where we're going to be starting and taking it right from the very basics up to everything that you need to build your own intranet using Google. We're going to cover how to make your site private and make sure that it's password protected so only you and your staff have access to it. And we're going to show you how to share the site with your staff members or your contractors or maybe even partners that are working with the business. We'll cover how to choose a theme, update the colors of your site, and add your logo to personalize it and make it feel like yours. And then we're going to show you how to create the different departments and the areas of your business. Now, these are the basics for setting up the structure of your Google site. And once we've done that, we're going to delve right into things like how to create individual pages and how to structure the content that you can use to add to your site. We're going to go through how to edit, move pages, and even delete pages if you don't need them anymore. We'll go through how to access page revisions. So if you've created changes to a page and maybe you want to roll back to an earlier version, we're going to show you how to do that. And finally, when you're ready to add content to your systems and processes and procedures that you want to add to your site, we're going to show you how to add images and videos so you can bring it all together in one place online for your training, policies, and procedures for your company. So let's get started. Before we dive right into the demo, let's have a chat about why it's important to have an intranet for your business and how a small business can use an intranet to deliver more consistently to your clients and have a better experience for your staff, but also your partners and everybody that does business with you. Now, think about an intranet as a digital version of a standard operating procedures manual. If you've read books like Work the System or The E-Myth or The 4-Hour Workweek, you may be familiar with the concept of a standard operating procedures manual. And this is, think about it like a, a book or a binder, which includes all of the systems, processes, and policies that you need in your business. Now, don't think about this as a way to control your staff or, or to create bureaucracy in your business. Think about this as a way to create more consistency and a clearer deliverability in what you do and therefore a better experience for your clients and customers. In the old days, if someone ran a cafe or maybe a gym, they might have had paper-based systems, so you know, tick boxes and, and other manual-based systems of, of keeping track of, of how to do things in the business. Uh, but creating an intranet is an online digital version of these systems which make it accessible from multiple devices. So it means if you have some staff that maybe work virtually or from home, uh, they can all access it in the one place. But also it means that you have the flexibility of not having to update paper-based systems all the time. So that's why it's important to have an intranet in your business. Well, why is it important to use Google Sites? So we started using Google Sites a number of years ago, about five or six years ago now, when I first started writing systems for my business. So I had a business coach at the time, and what my business coach recommended was that I start documenting the systems and processes in my company to start delivering more consistently to my clients. Now, what I found was I was writing out my processes, you know, how do you uh, enter the building and enter your security details in, uh, into the security system? Uh, how do you send an invoice to a client? Uh, how do you answer the phone and what's our policies around communication? But as I was building out those systems, I was putting them into Microsoft Word and storing them in my Dropbox, 
but it wasn't the most effective way of actually sharing those policies and processes with my team. And I found that, number one, they weren't really being used, and number two, they weren't being updated by me either, because we didn't have one place to go to for all of our processes. Now, along came Google Sites, and I found a way to store all of our systems and processes online, which meant that they were available from my mobile device if I was using my iPhone or my iPad, or maybe one of my staff was using a mobile device. Uh, and it also meant that I had a way to access my processes for virtual staff. So we have a team that we're building in the Philippines, and they need to access our processes as well. We have VAs and we have project consultants, but emailing things around or saving them to a Dropbox and waiting for them to synchronize wasn't the best way for me to actually share them with my team. So, we chose to use Google Sites for a number of reasons. One of those reasons was Google Sites is free. And it's not only free for you as the business owner, but it's free to share with all of your staff inside your business, and you can also share it with anyone outside your business. Now, there's a small requirement, and that's that anybody you're sharing your Google Site with needs to have a Google address. So, either a free Gmail address, or a paid Google Apps for Work address. But as long as anybody you're sharing it with has one of those apps, uh, has one of those email addresses, then they're fine to access your site. So number one, the reason we chose Google Sites was it's free. That made it a really, really compelling choice. Number two, the reason I liked Google Sites over using something like Dropbox or SharePoint or other technologies that are out there is because Google Sites integrates really well with the rest of the suite of Google Apps for Business. So we use Gmail, we use Google Drive, we use Google Docs, and we use Google Calendar in our business. And all of these integrate really nicely with Google Sites. So that was the second reason we decided to use Google Sites to build our intranet. So let's go through how to get started and create your Google Site. Now, if you've never been to Google Sites before, let me show you how to get access to Google Site, and we're going to start right at the very beginning with creating your site from scratch. So you'll see here that Google Sites is actually part of the Google Apps for Work ecosystem. Now, you don't have to pay for Google Apps for Work to get access to sites. If you've got a Gmail address, as I said, you can still access sites. Uh, but once you've signed up for a free Google address, uh, then you can access sites by visiting sites.google.com in your web browser. Now, one of the great things about Google Sites is you actually don't need to use uh, any specific software installed on your Mac or your PC. It will actually work regardless of which computer you're working on. So whether you're on your mobile device, uh, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, whether you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer or Google Chrome, it doesn't really matter. You will get the same experience working with Google Sites across any of those platforms. Now, we of course recommend that you use Google's browser. So Google, uh, Google Chrome is the most recommended browser to use when you're accessing your Google site. So let's walk you through getting started and actually creating your site. So you'll see here that uh, I've accessed sites.google.com, and I'm going to go ahead and create my site. So the first thing that we want to do is actually create a site by going to our left-hand side menu here and clicking the Create button. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to choose a name for our site, and if we'd like, we can also choose one of the themes and templates from the Google Sites Gallery. Now, these themes and templates, they don't really come with content. They more just come with styling and a little bit of uh, you know, layout or maybe a color change, so you can uh, make the site look a little bit pretty when you start from scratch. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a name for our site. Uh, and we're going to call it Kids Sun Shirts, which is the name of our adopted business at Business Blueprint. So once I've created a name for my site, you'll see that Google automatically creates a suggested URL for the site. And you can, in most cases, just leave that as the, uh, as the suggested site there, just completely blank. And, um, and from there, I can select a theme. So you'll see here that there's lots of different themes to choose from. Um, for now, I'm going to stick with a the default theme, and then we're just going to go ahead and create the site. So let's click the Create button, and let's get started on the site. So I've got a little pop-up that's come up here, and it actually says, this location is being used by another site. Now, this might happen to you when you go to create your site. If you name it something generic like Business Intranet or My Business Systems Online or something like that, um, you might come across this error. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a little number two in the URL there, and that's going to let me create the site. Here we go. Let's create the site. 
Maybe we'll be second time lucky. Here we go. We've got our site ready to go. Now you'll notice here straight away that our site has been created, but we didn't have to download any software, we didn't have to install anything to Chrome, it just runs 100% in the browser. As I said earlier, that means that you'll get a consistent experience, whether you're using Chrome, Firefox, or a Mac or a PC, it doesn't really matter. So let's look at the basics of the navigation of Google Sites. So straight away you're going to notice that on the left-hand side we have our menu, so right now, there's only two options that are in the menu. There's Home and there's Sitemap. We're going to start building out that menu soon. You'll notice in the top right-hand side, um, here we've got a search box, and that's where we can run searches um, for any of the content in our Google site. Now, one of the great things about having that search box there is it means that when we're searching for systems or processes, or our staff are searching for systems and processes, they're not getting mixed up with your general working documents in your Dropbox or your general working documents in your Google Drive. Using the search functionality in our Google site means that once we've added our systems and our processes and our training to this site, anyone can search and find the information that they need. So, We've got the basic layout of the site here, and we've shown you what the home page looks like. Now let's work on starting to build out some of the other pages. So, if we'd like to build out pages, build out sections, and build out the framework for our site, we first need to check our security processes and just make sure that we've shared it with the right people, and we need to make sure that we've shared it with our team and shared it with either view access or edit access to our team, because we can lock down different functions and features. So let's start with how to make sure our site is private and make sure that it's only shared with people that we choose. So let me show you. If you go to the top right-hand corner, you'll see the Share button here. And this is where we can share the site and we can change the sharing preferences. Now, an important thing to note is if you've created a Google site on a Google for Business, uh, Google for Business address and account, you'll notice here that automatically my site is shared with everybody at my company. So you'll see the little pop-up here. It says, Peter, you've shared this with IT Genius, and anyone at the company, IT Genius Australia, can find and access this site. So if you're creating a site and maybe you want to get some work done on it before you share it with all of your team, just be mindful that that option's there, and by default, it's going to share it with everyone in the business. Now, second most important thing to note is if you're creating a site with a Gmail address, Google originally designed Google Sites to be open and public for you to build your own business website on Google Sites. Now, we probably wouldn't recommend building a Google business website on Google Sites, but it's great for an intranet just for your private business and your private business needs of systems and processes within. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today. Mm.